Hey friends, how's it going? And we're back. I had a little week-long vacation, which was lovely. And by week-long vacation, I mean from filming. <laughs> I had a friend over last weekend and she was here the whole weekend, so we didn't obviously film anything. And then this week I was just not feeling it, so I didn't do it. But we are back this week and that's fantastic. Uh, I'm in that weird place where I'm trying to figure out what it is I'm gonna do on this board of doom. Let me close these blinds so we can talk about it. The uh, glare really kills this thing. All right, so last time we trimmed this polonaise skirt. It's not actually done though, and here's why. So this top row here needs something to cover that top edge. Um, and I did order something in the mail, but it came and it was entirely the wrong color. And I do have that right here. So as you can see, that's not going to work out. So um, the inner piece of whatever this is might be the right color, but it's not thick enough. So I think I'm going to take a sample of this fabric to Joanne and see what I can find there, which is like a horrible idea because Joanne is not great for trim. But this is what we're working with currently, and I just want this thing done. So um, I also could make trim, I guess. Um, and I might do that. I'm okay. contemplating something in the realm of this guy. Um, so I, that's, that's a project though. <laughs> so we'll see about that. I'm going to think about that for the rest of today and find out what I want to do. Back over to here. Um, I still need to trim the jacket, but I'm going to take a little break from this guy. I do need to rebind these stays. That's kind of actually like a little bit higher of a priority. I don't know why I could be fixing this trim. I might do that this week. Um, although this is like me sitting around doing this when not you guys are looking, so it's sort of boring for you. Um, I'm not even I'm not even here yet. <laughs> this guy, I don't even know what I would do. So I have to think about this for a while. The trim is a problem because I don't actually have any of this fabric left. So. I say that. No, I'm pretty sure I don't have any of that fabric left. So I'd have to go find some trim. So I might take some of that with me. Also, this is something that's doable. Um, I did have a look at what add closure for wand means. No idea. So I got to figure out what I was thinking when I wrote that down. Um, and I definitely could add this hooks and eyes uh, to the vest and skirt situation. That would be pretty quick. So that's great. Um, the polonaise does have a hat. I know that. And I can go find jewelry for sure this week if I need to. I did add some things to the Regency Day dress. Um, I forgot that these bangs and the, and the hat were Lynn McMaster's owned, so I can't just assume I have those, so I have to go figure something out for that. And then I do have an overdress pattern that, that one of my viewers actually made me, um, so I was going to try that out at some point. And then there's all this medium business. <laughs> so I'm thinking about what I want to do this week. Um, I know I'm going to probably hit some of this Ravenclaw. I'm going to maybe go to Joanna and see if I can finish off this skirt so I can cross some stuff off. Um, I'm probably going to work on Iron Man. I might work on the stays. We'll see. So I'm scheduled for a PG&E outage this weekend. Uh, may, many of you guys may know that California is having rolling blackouts this summer. It's not even summer. It's late October. We're well into fall. <laughs> But when it gets really dry out, which it is because it's been really hot. I mean, it's been like 90 degrees for the last three or four days. And then the winds start picking up, that's when the power line starts swinging. And if the power lines swing and they break for some reason, or a tree gets pushed over into a power line, it means that there's a potential for a giant fire hazard. And rather than go fix all these problems um, and like bury the lines and stuff, um, PG&E hasn't done that. And so they are turning our power off currently. Um, until they have time slash resources to do so. Meanwhile, their CEO is still getting lots and lots of money and big bonuses. So you can just imagine how I feel about that. <laughs> anyway, uh, so I thought for the first few minutes of this until I figure out what it is that I'm going to do, which might be tomorrow because I have to go to a party very soon, a Halloween party, um, I would show you the things I've got in the mail this week because they're kind of fun. So Jenny um, was in South Africa for her son's wedding and she went to this antique store and she started sending me pictures and there's a special something there 
that is a potential bustle dress that she bought and sent to me. Um, I mean, I sent her money back for it, but yeah. So we're going to have a look at that in a little bit. Um, but first, I was looking for some Georgian slash Regency buckles to use on like hats and also as belt buckles for any kind of Regency dress that I might want to use or say that overdress. And she found all of these. And let me just tell you, these were like under $10 each. I think like this one was the biggest one. I think it was like $8. <laughs> so she bought like all of them. And I'm like, fantastic. I'll send you money. Um, so we got these. They're all made out of paste. They're, they're diamante or whatever they're called. Um, and they're all antique Georgian slash Regency. I'm like trying not to be the shadow on this, but my lights are overhead. So here we are. Um, so this is the collection of those that I received. I also got this Victorian button hook here. Um, it goes on a tattling, that's why it has a little loop on the end. And it is good for buttoning both your jackets and also your shoes and stuff. My friend Lisa from Canada was into making lucid cording and she was doing this on the plane when we were um, in Europe together. And I was trying to figure out how she was doing it and watching her and we all got very interested. So she sent a bunch of us these lucid cord maker things. So to go on YouTube and learn how to make this, but I did buy cord while I was there, like a, sorry, not cord, I bought some, some thread, no, string, no, yarn, no, cord, I don't know. Anyway, it's used to make this, um, some sort of stringy situation that you weave together with using this. This, Abby from American Duchess had one of these uh, books that she got on her Instagram story and I was fascinated because I've been looking for a book like this for quite a while and it's an education book and I think this one was printed in like 1914 I want to say um, anyway it is called uh, I don't know if you can even see it uh, shelter and clothing and it has such interesting stuff in it. So it has all about the home. Um, so your house, how to decorate your house, textiles to use, stuff like that. It has this whole thing on how the, the plumbing situation works in a house, which I'm like, that's fascinating to teach someone, you know, in, in a young lady in school in, the in 1914. It also has this huge section on textiles and clothing. So they go through all these different textiles, all of the natural fibers. So like um, cotton, flax, wool, silk, um, compares them. It talks about making undergarments. Um, there's a whole bunch of patterns in here. Uh, it does talk about historical costume from the perspective of a 1914 person. Um, it talks about embroidery. Uh, this one's costuming design. This one's millinery. So it has all this cool information on it, and it's actually like a textbook, like there's a note to teachers in here, so it's it's teaching you how to make these. But it also teaches you like the history of like the textile itself, including like different weights, how much they should cost, it talks about budgeting for clothing, all that kind of stuff. So I thought it was super interesting, um, so I found one for $11 on eBay. She got hers in a historic district when a bunch of them went on a little Halloween trip. Um, and I saw this and I was like, oh my god, Abby, that's great. She's like, yeah, it's a really cool book. So I found one on eBay for $11. So I snatched that up. If anyone knows how to clean these to give them a little bit of a, a cleanup, please do let me know because I've been dying to try and figure out how to clean them. They are made with paste and not real gemstones. So I was just going to use warm soapy water um, to see if I can get a little of the grub off them. But if anyone has any commentary, please leave it down below. Okay, so I'm going to unpack this beauty here. I haven't done it yet. I have had this for about a week now. Um, and I'm going to have a look at it and hopefully go through it with you and we can talk about what there is to see. This is she. Um, this is obviously just the bodice. The woman at the store thought it was broken because these are separate from the skirt. <laughs> uh, the skirt has a little bit more damage than the bodice does. But I got it largely so that I could um, investigate it and like learn stuff from it. So this condition is perfectly fine for me. So we think, and by we I mean me and Jenny and kind of the internet, <laughs> think 
that this was originally somewhere in the early 1870s, probably like 1872, 1873, and it was a reception gown slash uh, evening gown. And there's a bunch of things in the skirt that make us think that, so I'll get to that in a little bit. But it's also been modified a few times, and I feel like that's really, or at least in a few places, maybe not a few times. Um, and that is one of the things that I find really interesting, because they managed to modify it really well. And it's possibly been modified for a later period, like this could have gone from 1870 to 73 to somewhere in the 1877 range, because it has a bum pad in it that has been added. So I feel like they repurposed this gown, which is pretty awesome. So here you can see it has some beautiful lace tacked in. I'm going to, I am going to turn it inside out and show you guys that. Um, it has this net in it, this black net everywhere, and it's also on the skirt. Um, definitely had extra trim added all over here. And this trim is uh, a very good match and I I can't tell I don't I don't know if it's the same fabric or not it feels the same it's a little bit lighter in color and I don't know if that's translating on camera but it's just very very slightly it's all handmade except maybe this uh, gusset that they put in here which does look machine stitched but I'll have a look on the inside in a minute um, but you can actually see the little tiny stitches in there And you can see there's some like random stuff that like what is this for exactly that's in here that's good to look at i'm going to spend some time like with this guy uh checking it out a lot more but i'm just giving this is my first look as well as yours this has got some beautiful lace with some velvet ribbon run through it uh the other sleeve is obviously the same and um just come to a nice point at the bottom there and then the back has uh, hook closures and then fabric, or sorry, thread bars that have been made and put in. It's obviously for someone who is fairly small. Um, this is definitely not my size. And then if we open her up, can see all the beautiful stuff including sweat stains yum uh, you can see where the tr the trim was attached with um, different colored thread because it is for this black net so they wanted to use black thread um, you can see all the like beautiful hand stitching in here where they whip stitched the edge down um, it's not attached down it's just whip stitch closed to prevent fraying it is completely flat lined um, and I, something I found very funny about it is where they added this gusset here. This does look machine stitched here for sure. Um, they caught the, the, the gusset flap here, like they pressed it open this way, but then they caught it back into it here. And I do this all the time and I always do it by accident, but now I'm wondering if that's on purpose. And they definitely put the tape over it again, like you can see that there's... Um, a little chunk of additional tape covering this um, and I'm not quite clear on why they did that so if anybody in the comments knows let me know um, it says it was number 117 and I don't know what that means there's a hook here to hook into the skirt um, and there's definitely like something got on this these uh, are boned they feel like steel they're not super flexible like whalebone um, so I'm going to go with steel, um, but I haven't, I'm, I don't think I'm going to open it up to find out. Um, is there anything else that's interesting in here? So these edges are pinked, so maybe these are pinked first. So they're very, very delicately pinked. Um, so maybe they did pink all of these first before they stitched them. But otherwise, this whole thing is hand-stitched which is super interesting to me. Um, they did have machines by this time, but they were probably very expensive for a person to own. Up here we have, look at these tiny, tiny stitches. I mean, that's my thumb. To be fair, I have giant thumbs, but 
I mean, those are some tiny stitches. And then when they put it on the trim, they were just like, whatever. <laughs> Don't worry about stitch length. It's very beautiful. All right, so I'm going to go have a look at the skirt. I don't know how I'm going to show you that because I don't have a form that is small enough to put it on. So we're just going to have to have a look. Okay, this is one having a giant table. It is super awesome. <laughs> uh, so I did some measurements. This waistband is 30 inches around, which means it's probably for a 29 inch waist because there's some overlap there that has to happen and uh, in order to close it. And then also the skirts underneath it take up just a smidge of room so definitely someone with a 29 inch waist the distance um, of the seam here from the very top to the bottom of the front which is here and you can see the back just keeps going so there's a definitely room for a bustle um, is about the same length I think it was 38 inches it was about the same length as my walking skirt so I would say she's about as tall as I am, and she has the same waist measurement I did in college. So <laughs> that was a long time ago and many pounds. Um, so she was your average human um, who wore this, which is great. Um, definitely like to de demystify the 17 to 23 inch waist. That's not always a thing. So that's beautiful. Um, it has a little bit of staining. The fabric is actually in really good condition, except right here at the waistband, um, where it definitely has shattered, and it's shattered in more than one place. So I'm very hesitant to try to hang this up because it's there's also shattering here, um, as you can see. So, and I tried to hold it at this area, and it like I heard a sound, and I was like, nope. <laughs> Um, there's the bum pad that I was talking about that looks like it was possibly added later to give it a little poof Which makes me think that they transformed this dress into a natural form dress and took the bustle cage out But I'm not positive about that um, It's possible that she just wore it with this and a bustle cage and it was just the time of the time but they did make the, the top bigger by um, Gosh, maybe maybe three or four inches um, with this gusset here so someone either different or who had gotten larger over time uh, wore this dress um, so as you can see it has the same net and then it also has ruffles and then more net and then a ruffle um, here for that the entire thing um, has what I feel like is linen yeah um, uh, like flat lining at the bottom to add some weight and body which is totally something that I'm used to doing on my own garments from uh, a historically accurate perspective so that's really cool to see um, you can see again where they added the black trim um, in sort of a haphazard stitch so nothing fancy uh, so all of you guys who are worried about how sloppy your stitches are when you're adding on trim don't worry about it <laughs> because these are a mess and they're really long and they're really far apart and I mean mine usually looks something like this <laughs> so now I don't feel so bad about it I'm gonna turn this inside out at the top so we can have a look at that too okay so I didn't want to like completely flip it inside out because I don't know how this fabric will deal there's also like some tearing right here as you can see um, so I'm hesitant to to flip her inside out just yet. Um, you can see the tapes here, which pull together the back seams and hold it back to make a bustle, so that is obviously bustle. Um, again, with this bum pad, um, there's definitely a waist tape in here. Um, it was closed with a hook and eye. Um, this is where the shattering is. Here's the hook. And there's the eye, and then there's also a button, which I think was added later. There's actually a whole bunch of buttons that go up this, so maybe they are original. Um, so those were added in. Uh, the seams in here appear to be, like this is a selvage edge, which is great, like I can feel the difference in it that's selvage. Um, and they are just left open. This is a selvage edge. I think they're using all selvage edges in here as their seams. 
so they didn't finish the seams. It's feel, it, you know how selvages feel like stiffer and harder? Um, definitely, like, and you can see that stripe there. So these are all selvage edges as far as I can tell. So they're all that feeling. I wonder how, how they got that shape out of a selvage edge. Because they both appear to have it. It's very definitely stiff right here. Um, stiffer than like right next to it. So that's interesting. Um, this guy was just like hacked in here. And I don't know what it's filled with, but it feels very stiff. It feels like there's just fabric in here and I can kind of see through it a little bit. I think they used excess fabric because I can see dark fabric here and then light fabric right here. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. Um, there's some gathering here. Looks like almost like cartridge pleats. It's very interesting. Tiny pleating. I'm looking for evidence of a pocket, which I don't see, but there is this flap in here. Oh, that's how they sized it. They just pulled it up and put it in the waistband so that they could make it longer if they wanted to. I see Lori Tavin doing that occasionally with her gowns. That's just in the back, so it might have been that the back was slightly longer and they pulled it up a little bit uh, when they converted it. Anyway, um, I'm going to keep investigating this guy over time. I do not see evidence of pockets in this dress, which makes me bummed because I was hoping to find some. Um, but if I find out anything else, I will definitely come back to you and show it to you. And... Uh, get the 411. If you guys have any commentary about this or learn something that I did not talk about by looking at this video, please discuss in the comments below. I find it super fascinating. There is this tape here uh, that is just from the waist tape to the waist tape. And I'm wondering what this is for. Thoughts, comments, suggestions? Is this for skirt supports to go under, uh, for underneath it? Comments? Anybody? Well, <laughs> this creepy AF <laughs> situation has been brought to you by pg and &E. uh, I was gonna come back here and do some sewing, but they have turned off my power. So, tomorrow it is. Fun times. Thanks pg and &E. Okay, it's Sunday. Still no power. Cool. I think they turned it off around 5 yesterday. Still went back on. It's um, like one on Sunday. Like, we had a bit of a lion. Um, are you gonna focus on me, camera? Maybe, maybe not. So we have a bad lighting situation, obviously, because those don't work. Um, and uh, so I have to like do what I can in the amount of hours that I have good light for. So that's only a few, because it's gonna start getting dark-ish around like 5:30. So, what I'm going to do is do some hand sewing stuff today that I can take care of um, and get it knocked off this list because today I was supposed to be sewing all day. Things happen. <laughs> so, I'm going to work, uh, I'm going to try to do the raven claw hooks and eyes and I'm going to figure out what that closure for the wand should be. I think I might just make a loop in my pocket so that I can slide it through and it'll hold it. Um, I, I think I figured out what I meant. So there's a bunch of stuff I can handle and get done, um, and hopefully <laughs> make some progress without electricity, but as Bernadette says, hand sewing is a thing. <laughs> That's what she said yesterday about this, and I was just like, oh, right, yeah, for you. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not going to make new stuff without my machine, no, no. Mm -mm. <laughs> so I'll do all the stuff that I can. So I'm going to start with that Ravenclaw, which means I got to put it on. So I'm going to see if it even fits still. So that's the first thing that's going to happen. Okay, this lighting situation sucks, <laughs> but this is what we've got. Um, so I tried it on and it totally does fit. I don't have the underskirt under the skirt right now, but that's okay because it, it attaches like up here. So Sarai marked these pins for me a while ago and they do line up pretty well. So... Um, I would say I need to do a hook. I think what I'm going to do is put the hooks here and then an, an eye so I can just and on the inside of this um, so I can just 
hook them together so that this guy does not ride up constantly all night. Although I feel like I might be slightly thinner than I was when I made it, so it actually fits slightly better, which is great. Um, it's one of the few costumes I have where I don't need to wear a corset. Um, so that's fantastic. Um, and that reminds me, I do vaguely like this vest pattern. Um, I wonder what pattern I used. I'll have to go look at my notes. Anyway, uh, so I'm just going to pop some hooks and eyes in here, and then this line item will be done. And this is like one of those things that's been sitting in my closet for like, I don't know, four or five years. It's my hair stuck in here. And um, not getting done. And all it is is a set of hooks and eyes here and a set of hooks and eyes here. This is why UFOs are stupid, guys, because we like avoid them like the plague. Like, we just can't possibly be burdened with adding one set of hooks and eyes in order to cross something off a list. Like, this is, this is my life. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna go do that and cross this off the list. Um, I guess while I have this on, I should look at the whole wand situation. So let me go get my wand and see what happens. Hi again. Okay, so here's the situation with the wand. This one is Hermione's wand, in case anyone's curious. Um, I do have a few wands to choose from, but I think what I wanted to do I'm not positive because this pocket hi, is not long enough to actually like contain a wand. So I think I wanted to make a loop here at the very top of the pocket so it would like basically hold it in my pocket upright like this so it was easy to grab and it wouldn't do that all night. You hear that wind? That's why we have power out because the winds cause trees to knock into power lines and knock them over and start fires because pg and &E can't keep up with the amount of power lines they have to deal with. I have commentary on this, <laughs> but I do understand the problem and I do feel like turning off the power when it's super windy is currently the best solution, although it tends to like kill people <laughs> because people are on ventilators and need power and stuff, so I'm looking at me in here instead of at you guys right there. That's really dumb also. Okay, so I think I know what to do with this. Um, I don't have this fabric anymore, so I think what I'm gonna use is some of this fabric because I have that. And it's just a loop that's kind of inside the pocket here, so I think it'll be fine. So I'm gonna go off and do those things. Um, I, I assume that you guys know how to sew on a hook and eye and you don't need to watch me doing that, so I'm gonna do that and I'll be right back. Okay, this is not gonna look any different to you guys, but there are hooks and eyes in here and now I can go like this and this will not come way up. So that's fantastic. And we'll make sure it looks good in pictures and stuff. Um, so that's great. Um, I had another idea, which was, instead of trying to make a fabric loop by hand right now, which I would normally never do, I'm just gonna take uh, some of this center ribbon that's in here, this blue, and make this into a loop and sew it into the pocket. So I'm feeling pretty solid about that idea, and I'm gonna go do that. Been about an hour but I did have breakfast in there too so uh, just trying to knock stuff off uh, I guess I can go do one thing now I hope that this doesn't go on for very long Kathy's here in California and she says where she is is saying because she's in the, the north of the North Bay um, no 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 that's the wrong one. Oh no okay I'll have to go back and fix that um, she's saying that it's about five days they're estimating on how long she's gonna be without power. And I'm like, oh my god. Mine should be back by either tonight or tomorrow, so. <sighs> Sorry, I guess I'm gonna have to go into work. <laughs> Usually I'm gonna work from home tomorrow, but it might be that I have to go in. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and do this. And then I might start moving stuff over to get it out of the way to make, you know, smaller sections. We have a little loop in here that's holding this so that it's gettable without it letting it flop all over the place. It's attached to the top of the pocket. Um, I'll take this off and show you what that looks like in reality so you can see it a little bit better, but I feel good about this, so that's fantastic. And for those of you interested in what I did, I just literally sewed a little piece of this ribbon together um, at one end that was big enough to slide the wand through, and I went deep inside this pocket in the corner and I stitched it down in there. And I left this, I was going to clip this off, but I want to see what it's like with it on there. I don't think it's going to annoy me to have it on there, and it feels like it's a good counterbalance to it. Um, I think if you cut it too close, it could pull the stitches out pretty easily, because um, there's only a few holding it in there. And just in case it gets snagged on anything, having that, like, 
extra bit that doesn't let it pull out might be good. So I'm just going to leave it, basically, is what's happening. Um, if I want to cut it off later, I can. But if I cut it off now and I decide that that was a bad idea, I can't do it later. And it blends in really well, so I can just tuck it inside the pocket if I'm not carrying my wand or whatever. Okay, um, I also noticed a little bit of schmutz on here from maybe somebody spilled something on me um, last time I was out. I would normally go and clean this right now, but I don't want to get water spots, and one of the ways to avoid that is to clean it and spritz it with water and then iron it, and since my iron can't work today, I'm just going to let this go and acknowledge that it's there, and it's weird because I can't like scratch it off like it's in there, so I'd have to like deep clean it. My kitty, Aries, really wants someone to play puff with him, <laughs> so I'm going to go down and play puff with him for a little bit. Um, that's what all that meowing in the background is. Anyway, I'm going to leave this as is, even though that's there, and just acknowledge that before I bring this somewhere, I really should clean that. So that's what's happened so far. I'm going to go look at my list and see what I can do. For those of you guys who really like to see this, whoop, there you go. I just got back in here. Uh, I did I did do some more stuff. I actually ordered some jewelry for this guy. So that's done. And I ordered some pins for this. And I ordered also synthetic whalebone um, and a couple of patterns from Burnley and Trowbridge. So, because if I'm on there ordering these anyway <laughs> with the shipping and stuff, I might as well buy some stuff. And I wanted to try synthetic whalebone. So I ordered 56 meters, as you do. <laughs> but, you know, I have a feeling I'm going to love it. So I thought it would be good. I mean, I do like steel, but I think it would be nice to have lighter stays um, and also lighter... Uh, corsets in general so okay so we kind of struck out at Joanne I did get more bias tape for this so I can rebind these so that problem is solved <sighs> this is the Cheshire cat skirt I think what I've decided is the skirt is too busy and it's really hard to trim it because it's too busy like I don't know what to do with it like I can't put anything on it that isn't gonna make it even more busy and that kind of I like it, or I have stress <laughs> like thinking about it so I'm like maybe what I need to do is get some pink silk and just make a new skirt and then have it just be plain pink and then I can trim it in purple or whatever so that it's not just insanity basically so I feel like that's what I'm gonna do this skirt can exist without trim and it'll be fine and I can still wear it it's not a huge deal um, but I'll probably get a skirt fabric that I can make. Did I like piece this? It looks like I pieced something. That's weird. I don't usually piece things. Um, anyway, I will get a fabric that I can just make a new skirt out of um, for that purpose. So I struck out with this guy because it's just too blue. It's midnight blue and it was just, it's just like too dark. They have black and they have navy and that is, this is between black and navy. So I think I was looking for like a gray color and they do have a bunch of gray like gim cord trims that I could get but of course I brought this fabric and not that fabric so, and I'm just like that's just rookie mistake so <laughs> I'm gonna put the other fabric and this fabric in my car so I can bring them with me and see what they have um, and I also feel like if that has to be on hold until I find the right trim then that's fine because um, I don't want to just slap something on there I don't love essentially so that's what I've decided there, so hopefully that, that makes sense to everybody and works in your brain. Um, but I do, I, I at least have one thing I can work on, so that's fantastic. But I am, as you can see, out of light. Like, this is the last of the evening light coming through my window that I'm showing you this, this video clip with. So I think I'm done for today with what I can do sewing-wise. And I think we're going to go see a movie, probably Maleficent. We'll see. All right, well, I'll uh, continue this on another day. It's Monday. We've got power. Um, I left work at about four, and I think my husband said that he thought we maybe had power at that point because the solar panels were registering that things were happening, and uh, they automatically shut off when you uh, lose power because you can't push electricity onto a grid that doesn't exist. So it, it shuts off your solar. Everyone's like, oh, solar's the way to go. And I'm just like, no, 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 I have solar. <laughs> they shut it off when the grid goes down. Because you don't actually use your own power. 
you pull off power from the grid and you put power onto the grid, but you don't use, like, I don't use the power that comes from my roof, which I get and I don't get and I get, so. Anyway, uh, I thought I, I have some chance that there's going to be no power tomorrow, tomorrow like tonight at 3 a.m. or something. They might turn off the power. I'm not sure. Um, it's <laughs> pg and &E website says we both are on the list and are not on the list of people who will be affected by that power line outage, power outage. So, um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm like, okay, cool. I'm gonna hope that we just it doesn't happen. The first time we were on that the the maybe maybe not list and we didn't have it, so I'm gonna hope this is the case. Anyway, I thought I would start on these stays. So um, it's pretty actually late. It's like 9:30. I'm watching what I deem as the rapey show, um, which is Outlander, um, because Addie from Hop and Bobbin is making a dress and it's an Outlander dress, and I'm like, oh, okay, stop talking about it. All right, so. I'm gonna do the tab part first because uh, I have a feeling that this is gonna be the most painful part to do. Um, so I'm gonna go rip this off and then what I got was single fold um, bias tape because then I can I don't have to contend with the fold I can just pull it over wherever I need to essentially but yeah we'll see how this goes. <laughs> um, I'm gonna try to keep it kind of thin but just a little bit bigger than this one is right now so um, to get more of this and then the top part is actually a giant pain in the butt because like the grommets as you can see like encompass it and I can probably pull that one out um, this one is gonna be a bit of a biz notch to deal with so I don't know if I'm gonna pull out the top the top has issues too like don't get me wrong the top really needs like this right here I don't know. Maybe I'm just gonna do it and I'm gonna accept the consequences. I don't know. I don't know how to put it back on over the grommets, essentially, though. Uh, I might have to pull the grommets out and <laughs> re-grommet this thing. I'm not sure. Um, I'm gonna worry about the bottom first. So I'm gonna go pull this out, pull all this off, and then start stitching. So, um, I'll report back at the end of the day how much I got done. It's, oh, it's 10. So I'm probably only going to work for a couple hours, but at least I can get a couple hours in on it. So, yay. And an hour and a half later, we have one set of naked tabs. So the new binding is indeed like whiter than this by possibly like half again. But I think it's good because it'll really get up in there and hold it. And these days are very comfortable, so... I would prefer to keep using them if I can, but there's like in things like this where I have to like the binding is actually holding the boning on because I don't know what the hell happened here. <laughs> I just don't even know. Like the the I think what happened was the silk just frazzled completely and made it so that um it's just gone. <laughs> so it's no longer fabric here, but. That's okay, we'll make these work. Um, I will make another pair of stays at some point soon, but for now, I want ones that work and it's easier to rebind these. So, yeah. Um, vis a vis this top situation, I think I'm gonna have to take these out and then rebind it and then put these back in because they cover the binding. And the binding's even bigger, so, less I. Anyway, that's what's going on right now. Uh, I think I'm going to call this a night for right now and work on this again later this week. We've achieved Tuesday. I'm very excited about that. I still have power. I'm also very excited about that. <sighs> this is where my life is, peeps. Um, so I'm gonna take this set of stays and go sew on them. So I just wanted to check in and say hi. Also, I forgot to like check in about Maleficent. Have you guys seen Maleficent? Let me know your thoughts on that down below. I didn't dislike it, but I didn't love it, is my, like, review of it. I have questions. So, discuss down below. Please do not leave spoilers for people who haven't seen it. Just let me know whether or not you liked it, if you saw it. 
Um, yeah, so I'm gonna go sew on these for a little while and get some tabs bound, maybe. I'm gonna do the fronts so that that's done because um, the back's easy once the front is done. So I'm gonna go work on that. So I got more than halfway along the front of the bottom. So a quarter of the way, a little bit more. I only shoved the needle under my fingernail one time, so victory. <laughs> <laughs> it's all backstitch, so it's really slow. Uh, this is like, I want to say like five hours of work. <laughs> this is how slow I am. Anyway, I'm going to quit for tonight because it's like midnight. I did just go for a walk. Um, but I'm feeling pooped and I don't want to do it anymore. So I'm just going to wait till tomorrow. Hopefully finish up the, the front of it tomorrow, which is not very far. So only five and a half tabs to go. <laughs> Hello, it's Wednesday. I'm at the bargaining place of this video where I'm like, I just want to put this video up and get this done. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on these stays tonight. I don't know how far I'll get, but let's just say that I got done. And if not, I'll report back to you in the next video and call it good. Does that sound okay? I want to put this video up. I haven't put up a video one in like two weeks and I miss you guys and I want to talk to you guys and oh, are you going to focus? Okay, cool. Um, and <laughs> that means I have to go, like it's almost edited. Anyway, I just need to put this last couple things in. But in order to do that, I have to give it to you. So I want to do that. <laughs> so I'm going to stop this video um, here telling you it's Wednesday and I will sew tonight, but I'm going to have dinner first. Um, and then I'm going to work on these days. They will not get done tonight. I can guarantee you this will go into the next video, so I feel like that's good enough. Um, let's talk about some things I got in the mail from Burnley and Trowbridge. Oh my god, Angela is so cute. Okay, um, sorry, Angela owns Burnley and Trowbridge, <laughs> so I just love her. Um, she's adorable. And this was like the fastest shipping ever. I ordered this like two days ago. Alright, so I got this cape pattern because I like this cloak situation. I don't know if it's going to happen or not, but... And then this jacket. Like, who doesn't want this jacket, like, right here? I want it. Here are the 18th century pins I ordered. These are really massive, though. Straight pins. Like, wow, that'd be a big hole. Yikes. Alright, we're going to think about this, but they're there. I've ordered them. They exist. Um, I got a fig leaf pattern of a sleeveless Spencer. I got a fashions revisited pattern of like a bum roll and a bum pad and all that stuff. I don't really need a pattern for it, but you know, sometimes it's nice. Um, and then the shimmy sets. So there's that. I actually made like rinse out my organdy a little bit for this part and then keep it stiff for this part and then call it good i don't know we're gonna see and then i got synthetic whalebone so we're having this biggest discussion between all of us youtubers here about synthetic whalebone because my question was we're on a hype about not wearing plastic clothes but as someone pointed out to me one time oh my god it's plastic it is plastic what do you think synthetic means um, so, um, it is, it's plastic, it's, um, but it takes your shape like whalebone does, it acts the most like whalebone of anything we have, um, particularly the way that this is made, I think this is made in France, but I'm not positive, um, anyway, I bought 50 meters of it, I thought I got 56, but I guess it says 50 here, anyway, um, what, what are these, oh, these are nice rubber bands, anyway, um, so anyway, I have 50 meters of synthetic whalebone to make any corsets slash stays I want to going forward out of, and I'm very excited about that, but I was having like a miniature, like, hey, we don't like plastic <laughs> moment, but so the answer that I came to and that I think everybody else came to was this is the least worst option, you know, besides steel. Like, I mean, it's obviously better than <laughs> actual baleen because like... You only can get that from one spot, and nobody wants to do that. So, um, yeah, that'd be a bad idea. So, um, this is the least wor worst option? Question mark? Anyway, does anybody have thoughts on that? The I don't want to wear plastic, but I'm buying plastic to put inside my clothes. <laughs> um, but it does 
act just like Baleen did. And that makes your stays shape to you. It makes them much lighter because the stuff is super light, like especially compared to a bunch of steel. Um, it's just like a all around sort of really great option. <laughs> I know people use zip ties um, and that is not actually very far off from what this is. Um, this is chemically made to act more like whalebone than just like your random zip tie that may be any random thickness and stuff like that and may not take shape as well and maybe a different formulation of the plastic. So this is definitely better, but I can't really knock zip tie people if I'm going to put plastic in mine. <laughs> anyway, um, this is what I'm, I'm debating right now, but it doesn't matter because I have 50 meters of it, so I'm going to put it in something, right? Right. Anyway, that's what I have to say about that. Anyway, it was really good to film again. It's really good to sew again. I'm very excited about it. I'm excited to talk to you guys in the comments. What are you guys working on? What are you listening to? And what are you reading are my usual questions. Um, welcome to those people who are new here. There is a lot of new people here and I hope that you enjoyed this video. Um, despite its <laughs> rather dark outlook at some points <laughs> with the power of being out, um, I did actually get a lot of stuff done this week, which is fantastic. Um, and I am very excited about that. <sighs> That skirt, though, is going to go back in the closet <laughs> and wait to be finished until I can figure out what to do with it. Um, anybody have any thoughts on what they think I should do? Leave that down below also. Anyway, I hope you guys have a great Halloween. Uh, I am just hanging out with some friends, watching Hocus Pocus and passing out candy. I love to see the kids in their costumes. That's adorable, even though there's, you know, probably like 10 or 15 groups of them. Um, all of my costumes require corsets, and I don't want drunk people to spill stuff on them, so... No. <laughs> so I don't really dress up for Halloween most of the time. I do occasionally go out, but it has to be a really good party for that. Um, anyway, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't, and I will see you guys next week, hopefully, with another video. See you later. Bye, guys.